Today we're going to talk about some flat sketching for fashion design. I've started with a child's dress form mannequin that I screenshotted from the internet. We're going to go in and start with a few anchor points. We're removing the fill so that it's only a stroke and just doing a basic outline so we can go back in and convert the anchor points like so. This is where the sash will be. I'm making a little bit higher waist because it's a little girl's dress. Now I'm just adjusting the skirt so that it's the right fullness of what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to look at the size and shape of half of the dress so that I can then mirror it. and then join the anchor points and remove one so that there aren't any extraneous anchor points. Now I'm adding the front neckline and converting it so that it's rounded. And this is the basic shape of our dress. I'm going to go ahead here and add the stitching at the neckline. And now adding stitching at the armholes by outlining the stroke so that I get an exact shape, but just larger. I'll eyedropper the stroke from the neckline and then mirror it so that it fits the other armhole. Now we're going to add stitching or binding to the back neck. This is so that we can demonstrate where the zipper would be. I'm just cutting here for the stitching and the binding at the back neck, eyedroppering the stroke from the neck stitching, and then we're going to go in here and add a little bit of finishing for the zipper. The finishing for the zipper is going behind the back neck binding. That's why it stops there at that line. So now we've done the initial finishing. We'll move on to the sash belt. I just wanted to cinch it in a little bit there so that it doesn't look quite so bubbly. And here I'm shaping the sash belt. It looks a little thin, so I'm going to go in here and um, widen it up a little bit using the white arrow tool and just nudging it up a bit. Now I'm cutting off some excess from the stitching line at the sleeve. Now I'm adding it so make it a complete shape and then I'll use the shift M tool to remove the excess. Now I'm adding a knot for the bow and filling them both in white so that later when I go to color the sketch it'll be easier. Now I'm using the convert anchor tool to just shape up the knot of the bow so that it looks the way that I would like. I'm adding extra anchor points 
to shape it. Now here's the first loop of the bow. First I'm making it round and then going back in with the white arrow tool and reshaping it with the help of some extra points. When I've got it the way I'd like, I'm adding the bottom loop so that you can see that it's three-dimensional. See a little bit of the inside of the bow. I'm also using a brush stroke here so that this will look a little bit more sketched and tapered. Now I'm going to add a few drag lines so that there is a little bit more shape and dimension to the bow. I'll go back in later and add shading to help me out. Now we're copying that half and moving it over, rotating it, so that the bow has a little bit of an angle to it. Now I'm just going to do a few more adjustments to the bow, like changing the stroke of the drag lines, as well as making it a little bit more realistic in shape. Now I'm going to resize it a little bit and rotate it, just so it looks like it's a little bit more fun and more impactful. Now that I've made it more impactful, I also need to make the sides of this sash a little bit thicker so that they match the size of the bow. Now I'm adding in the ends of the bow so that it looks as if it's been actually tied around the waist. I want to make sure these have enough movement to them so I'll add a little curve at the edge. Something that you may not often notice about tied bows is that the tails of the bow are not both behind the bow. One is behind and one is in front. Rendering the bow this way ensures that it looks more realistic. Now I'm just going to add a few drag lines. Here I'm just adjusting stroke width. I want to make sure that the outline of the dress is thicker than all the lines at the interior. Now we're going to start in with the drag lines at the skirt. These show that the skirt has been gathered and so indicate that it will be rather full. It's important to add drag lines both at the waist and also at the hem. Otherwise, you may get a different skirt construction. Now I'm going to create a special brush just for the drag lines at the skirt. You create this by making a triangle with a rounded tip. Then I like to make sure that it's the same width as a stroke with a size of one. 
make sure that when you add this to your brush palette, it is an art brush and not a pattern brush. Also, if you would like to be able to change its color, you can choose either tints and shade or hue shift. Now I'll change all of those strokes to have the brush stroke and they look a little bit more like drag lines. Now it's time to adjust the hem so that it looks like it does have fullness and is folding over itself. I suppose this is a little bit of a ruffle effect. This takes a little bit of back and forth and a little bit of an eye. Don't be afraid to sort of play around with this while you're working on it. You want the hem to look a little bit organic and a little bit free flowing. You can achieve this by using the white arrow tool to move parts up and down as well as the convert anchor tool. Of course, before you do any of that, you'll need to add extra anchor points everywhere you want there to be a curve. Alternatively, you could also achieve this by using the pencil tool. However, it can be a little bit tricky. As you, can, as you can see here, even nudging these points back and forth with the white arrow tool can be a little bit tricky, and it just takes some time to figure out the way that you'd like it to look. It helps sometimes to zoom back out and then back in to get a better idea of what the skirt looks like in all its fullness. Sometimes you need to add in a few extra drag lines to make the curves at the hem make sense. Here I'm just going back and forth, adding more drag lines, and then I'll finally finish reshaping the hem. When I'm finished with the reshaping, I'll go ahead and add the actual stitch line of the hem. There are many different kinds of hem lines you can use. This one will use a single needle top stitch. However, other hems to to consider would be a pearl edge hem, a blind stitch hem, or rather a blind hem, a double needle top stitch, a cover lock stitch, and several other different kinds. Here I am just copying the main body, cutting off the bottom edge, and then I'll turn that into the stitch line. I'll zoom in here and make sure that there are no curves that have gone awry in the copying. And then I'll adjust any that don't quite make sense. Now we're just checking out everything and how it looks and I filled the entire body. Now this next part is definitely not mandatory but I like to add a little bit of shading to each one of my sketches. When I'm drawing in the shading I like to use the pencil tool so that I can get more organic shaping. This way I can have a more freeform experience and it helps 
to make the sketch look a little bit more three-dimensional. The functionality of the pencil tool is quite different than that of the pen tool in that you can continue to add extra anchor points without switching tools. All you have to do is to keep sketching over top and it just adds more I added an extra half moon of shading to the back neck because sometimes it's visually difficult to differentiate between a design detail and the actual front and back or interior of a style. When I choose a color to fill my shadows, I always use registration. I do this because whatever color you fill your sketch with once it's finished, registration always works as an overlay of darker color without discoloring the initial color with which you filled the sketch. Some other black colors can tend to add an interesting and strange coloration to the shadows of your sketch. If at all possible, I like to try to make my entire shadow one large shape. This makes it easier if I need to later hide the shadow while recoloring the sketch or possibly adding some extra details. This is simply a matter of taste though. And as I stated before, some people do not even like to add s shadows at all. The shadow as I'm drawing it right now is a bit darker than I want it to be in the end. It does help while I'm drawing out the shadow, however, to be able to see the shadows and their shapes. You'll see when I'm finished that I will lighten the overall color of the shadow shape and it will look much more like a shadow. I suppose that one of the reasons many people don't like to add shadows is that it can be a little bit time consuming, but I do like the overall effect in the end. Now that I'm finished, I'll just change the transparency so that it is a little bit lighter and appears a bit more like a shadow instead of a dark gray shape. Now I'll copy the dress body over and change the artboard size to 8.5 by 11. I intend to color the sketch as a dress I saw on Pinterest but I'll save an extra white sketch on the side. Here I'm using the Shift M tool to make a separate shape of the skirt so that I can then color block the dress. I want the skirt and the sash to be the same color. And now I'm creating a stripe pattern fill of navy and white to add to the top portion of the dress. 
This won't be correct for scale, so once I fill the top, I'll rescale it using the scale tool, as you can see. It's important to make sure that the only thing that is scaled is the pattern, if that's what you wish. Now for a little bit of fun, I'm going to add a colored back neck binding as well as a colored zipper tape and finishing. I'm using the Shift M tool again to easily create the shape of a back neck binding that I can color in and then send behind the stitching that I have currently. This just adds a little bit of what we call inner beauty. Now I've unhidden the shadows and I'm going to create a back sketch by mirroring the front sketch and then doing a few little adjustments like removing the back neck taping and the bow on the sash and adding a zipper that is full length. To indicate, I'm going to cheat a little bit here and just hide the shape of the skirt behind the updated back of the sash. Once I've reshaped the sides of the sash, I will then go ahead and bring the zipper forward um, so that it shows to the length that it will be. And then I will outline it with a single needle top stitch. Now I'm adding the edge stitching at the back of the neck, which indicates where the binding is at the interior. Um, there are ways to create binding where you cannot see the stitching at the outside, but generally in children's wear, in the interest of cost, um, we'll use a back neck binding. Now I'm just adjusting the shadows so that they no longer indicate um, the details of the front of the dress, including the lower neckline and the bow. And then, once all of this is updated, we will be able to go ahead and have a nicely finished sketch. Once that's all grouped, I will move it so that it is just a little bit behind the front sketch and then center it at the middle of the page and there we have it. A fully finished front and back sketch of a little girl's summer dress. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it ha has been both relaxing and informative. If you have requests for any other types of fashion sketches, please leave them below in the comments and I'll do my best to get on them. Thank you very much.